meeting, Monday, March 2nd, 2015, 9 a.m. in Council Chambers. Um, first up to uh, up uh, is uh, introduction of late items, and we don't have any of those. And so uh, next on our agenda is uh, a delegation, and it's from the Asuius Desert Society. And Denise Eastlick, who is the executive director, is here, and she's going to give us some information, more information than she did the last time when she came on January the 12th. So thank you, Denise. Well, thank you for having me here. And the first thing I've, I don't need a microphone. Yeah, you do. Oh, okay. Is that better? <laughs> I don't want to yell. Is it, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is reassure everybody I'm not going to bombard you with a ton of information. I felt like the last presentation so much got thrown at you and, and uh, so this presentation I'm just going to very briefly go over a couple things that weren't touched on last time. And the main thing I wanted to do is pass along some, some goodies and handouts for you. So the first thing you'll find in your yellow packet is our Desert Center wrap card. But more importantly, there's two passes attached. And I hope that everybody uh, this season can come visit us at the Desert Center. Uh, we will be opening April 26th this year, and we stay open through October. And that leads me to one of the key things I want to point out is although we're really mo probably most closely associated with the Desert Center, we are a year-round operation, and our winters are incredibly busy. And um, we do programs in the winter. We also tackle projects like this. This is a native landscaping booklet we produced a couple of years ago. So I wanted to make sure that each of you had that. And know that our reach is, is just more than the desert center. And like I said, we are year-round. The other thing you'll find in your packet is this. <coughs> fact sheet here gives you a real um, kind of a quick snapshot of the Desert Society and you'll see at the bottom is our our mission which is basically three words it's conservation restoration education but the one thing I didn't have a chance to do in the last presentation was really touch on why that mission is so important and so I did want to talk a little bit about that today and I'm sorry, I'm throwing so many handouts at you. <laughs> but also in your brochure, you'll see uh, a handout called the Antelope Brush Ecosystem. And that's just another name for the desert environment surrounding a soyuz. It's also called the Antelope Brush Ecosystem. And this handout really um, gives some great information on why our mission is so important. But if you don't want to wade through the entire handout, I can actually sum it up in three words for you. And I won't take credit for this. This was something that someone from the Ministry of Environment came up with. There's, uh, the three words all start with R. And the first one is risk. This ecosystem surrounding us is one of the foremost endangered in Canada. Second thing is richness. It, ha it is considered a biodiversity hotspot just because of the variety of species we have here. Um, BC itself is the most biologically rich province or and or territory in the entire country. And this area is also incredibly rich in terms of diversity of, of species. And then the last thing is a lot of the species here are rare. And that's different than endangered. Rare means that the, the species either occur, their populations are naturally small, or they're in a very limited range. And that's true of a, of a number of the species here. We have a bat, the pallid bat, found nowhere else in Canada. We have an endangered butterfly, Bear's Hair Street, found nowhere else in Canada. We have the desert night snake that scientists didn't even know it existed until the 1980s. And I just found out the other day, we have an insect here called the ground mantid that has only been observed between Oliver and Asoyas. So, you know, and that's just a few examples of the rare species we have here. So that, that puts us not only that cons conserving this area is important to the community, but it's also really, really important on a national scale. And even in international scale, a lot of the species here um, move and migrate up 
up back and forth through the Okanagan Valley. So what happens here is important to those species coming from, from the south, and particularly with things like climate change. Uh, the prediction is what they think a species will migrate north or they'll migrate up, up in elevation to deal with climate change. So this migration portal is only going to become more and more important in the years ahead. Um, so I really wanted to address some of the why our mission is important. The other thing, it, um, like I said, the founding fathers of the Desert Society were also really concerned about impacting and, and having a positive benefit on the community. And so I, I know I touched a little bit on that, but in terms of our impact on the community, we attract about eight to, eight to 10,000 visitors annually which is a, a nice tourist draw. Not only that, but we protect what draws tourists to the, the area. A lot of tourists are coming to this area just because of the unique habitat, so that's really important. Um, we also provide uh, jobs and volunteer opportunities. So from an economic standpoint, we're contributing to the, the community. From a social standpoint, and I did include that in, in your packet as well, we do programs year-round. So you'll see that this is some of the winter programs that we're doing. Um, we also partner a lot with local schools. Um, so we do free programs for schools, so we contribute in that way. We empower local citizens, give them the tools they need to actually make a difference and help the, the environment. So those are just some of the ways we, we try and enhance community life. Um, so again, why our mission is important. And then who we partner with, um, also didn't necessarily stress that that much. There is some information on this fact sheet about some of our partners. And our partners aren't just conservation organizations, although that's certainly a, a key, key element we try and cultivate. But we also partner a lot with local businesses and we help promote them through activities like Romancing the Desert. Uh, Romancing the Desert is our annual fundraiser. It's designed not only to showcase the habitat here, but also to showcase the community and the wonderful businesses, the wineries, the restaurants. Um, we have 100 silent auction donors that we try very hard to promote in our program. So uh, we're very much into promoting the community, and we also do that through our marketing for the Desert Center. We help promote Osoyas. Um, we also have um, partners with post-secondary um, schools, not only um, who come to the Desert Center for tours, but also who use us as a research site. We, we have had UBC, um, Simon Fraser, um, Selkirk College all use us as research sites. So that's an, a, a really important contribution we make as well. And then very quickly, I'll get back to the funding thing, which is part of why I'm here too. Uh, just a review, the two key things I wanted to mention from my former presentation is the town's funding. Um, we do aggressively pursue grants throughout the year and that's a, that's a huge commitment for us. You can see on the back of this newsletter is some of our funding partners. Uh, and every year, like I said, we aggressively pursue that. Why the town's funding is so important is because grants, by and large, do not fund um, core expenses like wages. Um, so even if we applied for $100,000 and got $100,000 in grants, only a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of that would ever offset our core expenses. Um, a lot of the grant money that we get in is for projects and it's money in, money out. We're paying hard costs. So the town funding is incredibly important because it does allow us to cover core expenses. The other thing is it provides us some economic um, or some financial security. 57% of our funding is open to annual uncertainty. It's not based on our desert center admissions or our memberships or anything that we can somewhat control. Um, so having us as a, or having the town include us as a line item gives us some financial stability and security that can carry us through year to year. So I just wanted to emphasize that. I know I covered that in the other presentation. And then in terms of what's next, um, 
just wanted to let you know that we we obviously are very committed to being a partner with the town and we uh, we really value that partnership um, are going to continue to provide the services to the community that we have been providing what we've got coming up is we've, we've done two winter programs Sue thank you for being at this last one uh, we've got two more coming up and um, one of those is, uh, is partnering with the Sorry Lake Water Quality Society. That one's on March 28th. Um, we also partnered with uh, the South Okanagan Rehab Centre this year. We like to showcase other organizations whenever we can. Um, we are also partnering with the Meadowlark um, Festival and doing a Meadowlark program. We're partnering with uh, the ph Photography Club um, and doing a photo walk for opening day. Um, what other partnerships? We'll be doing free school tours again this year. And then again, we have um, a phenomenal number of partners when we do Romancing the Desert. And this year's Romancing the Desert is on August 8th. So those are some upcoming things. Um, we're also working on some improvements to the Desert Center this year that I didn't get a chance to mention. We'll be doing uh, building a new deck and some upgrades to the plaza area. And then for those of you who maybe want a closer look. I know the Asoyas Times was kind enough to include this in one of their newspaper articles last spring. But we will continue to do some work uh, planning for a new building. This is just a kickoff point. We realize that, that building plans go through umpteen renditions over the years. Um, but we did just want to get the vision started and we will continue to to move forward on that and plan on that but I did want to bring this and pass it around um, ultimately we do need to replace the buildings the desert center um, so that's also on the agenda so those are some of the things coming up for this year so hopefully that wasn't quite as long-winded as the last one and again I threw I know I threw a lot of information at you last time um, so if there's any questions this time, and I'd love to pass this around so everybody could take a look. Please do. Thank you, Denise. Um, your presentations are always most interesting. And, uh, and, and don't worry. The more information that we can get, the better decisions that we can make. And because this is televised, um, it, it's going to be available for anybody who wants to, to click on and have a look at this. So we do appreciate it. I just had one question, then I'll open it up to Council. If you, if, if there are people in town who um, have moved here, and I, I met one lady the other day who's looking to get involved in, in things, and, and I steered her to a couple of things. And um, I'm just wondering if, um, do you use volunteers all year long? Are they just in the summertime? And how would somebody who wanted to become a volunteer or find out more about it? Um, volunteers, we do have, thank you for asking that, we have about 50 or 60. Uh, some are year-round. They help us um, either in the office or with maintenance projects that can carry on year-round. Uh, the majority of the work does take place when the Desert Center is open. And people on the back of that fact sheet, they can get a hold of me, but also it even includes some of the ways people can get involved here. And absolutely, we are always looking for volunteers. Um, they're kind of the heart and soul of what we do. So absolutely, I agree. And we have incredible. We're, we're incredibly appreciative because we have wonderful volunteer support in the community. Like I said, 50 to 60 volunteers. So, so they would get hold of you yeah. um, down here if if they were interested in becoming absolutely. a volunteer. Absolutely, they can just Good. call the office number. Thank you, um, Councillor Rose. Did you have a question? Thank you, uh, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, uh, good job, Denise. Uh, not just today, but in general. Uh, I know the hard work that you put into it, not only yourself, but the volunteers. And, you know, uh, so much of the profile of what people see of your facility there, you know, so, so much of the stuff that goes on is behind the scenes and that kind of thing. And I know you're very involved in that kind of thing. And so you don't often see those kind of things. So my compliments for looking after know keeping that generator going and that solar power <laughs> stuff Thank and you. <laughs> you know um, I wanted to ask about um, and I just briefly went through this and there's a page in there about our invasive uh, species that we're really really struggling with in our community and uh, um, we're having to put some budget money towards it and I think one of the things a lot of people don't realize is that the town you know as a as a 
administrator of so many things. That's one of the things that we have to clean up in this town. We, we have to identify, we have to find where they are, and then we have to figure out some way of, of getting rid of these things or at least controlling them anyway. Have you ever thought of maybe having an education course? I know education is so important and, and it sometimes really contributes to solving the problem. And I'm just wondering if you'd ever thought about, you know, maybe bringing that out and, and you know, having people getting them together and helping them identify what it is. Because with the invasive species, so much of it is nobody knows what the heck they are. They look at them and they don't know what they are. They don't know how to control them. And, these things are just suckering all over our community and uh, and you know we need to do as much as we can and education is always a good way to deal with it so somewhere in all those words there was a question I think so <laughs> <laughs> sorry no I, yeah. a really good point um, a few things on that is a few years ago we did do an invasive pro uh, plant program and and you're right CJ it's probably time to do another one um, last fall, one of our staff actually began work on a, kind of a how-to manual on how to deal with in pl invasive plants because some, you know, there's a very short window of when you can address them. And so what I'd like to do is take the manual she started and for education purposes, keep working on it and then get it on our website so that people do have a tool on how to deal with invasive plants. And exactly right, it is probably time we did another program. And maybe that's something that we can look at adding into our spring or summer schedule is another invasive plant program. Um, I think the other thing that question opened up is we, we really seriously, I can't say the word enough, consider ourselves a partner uh, with the town. We don't look at this as just um, kind of a one-way relationship where you give us money and, and it's a handout. We, we want to be your partner. So anytime there is something like that, uh, an educational need that you see in the community that's within, within our realm to contribute to, please bring it up. Um, that's what we're here for. And, and you know, we can, in, we can create programs or, or address those needs. And in invasive plants, if that's a need right now, we can definitely take a look at adding a program. And if you think of any others, please let us know. Thank you. I, I think, were you thinking of puncture vine? Because that's what came to my mind right away. Yeah. And I'm not sure that I even, you know, if I tripped over it, I would know what it was. So uh, yeah. Councillor Rhodes is correct. But. Yeah, and it's, it's escaped ornamentals. I know that's the program we did a few years ago. They're, they're a real huge issue too. Uh, people put, plant them in their gardens and they, they spread out from there. So. Yeah. Yes, Councillor King. Yeah, Denise, if uh, people wanted to volunteer, maybe you could give us your phone number or your website. I mean, we have it in our packets, but maybe the public that's watching. Oh, sure. Uh, phone number is area code 250-495-2470. And then our website, our email address is mail at desert.org. And our website is www.desert.org. You can't get a much better website than that, so it's really easy <laughs> to remember, desert.org. Yeah. Thank you. Good, thank you. Anybody else? Any, no? Any questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Romanko. Denise, I just, uh, if I recall, uh, one of the projects that you're working on is reconstructing your boardwalk. Is it, Where is that project at? Uh, um, that's ongoing maintenance. I mean, okay. we, we put... Um, Probably, I think last year it came close to 100 hours of volunteer labor. So that's that's ongoing. Okay. Um, and yes, at one of these years, that entire boardwalk will probably need to be replaced. Interestingly enough, that'll be about a million dollar project. We had a quote done on about a quarter of the boardwalk, and it was 250,000. Wow. Um, so, you know, we, we know these things are on the horizon. Um, I think buildings right now, uh, getting the buildings replaced is, is probably a, a higher priority um, than replacing the entire boardwalk. We can continue to maintain it, make improvements, and keep up with that. Perhaps the um, golf carts that go on that for romancing should be <laughs> taken off. I, I'm, I'm wondering if they contribute to the destruction of the boardwalk more than just people walking. They might, hey? Yeah, we, we <laughs> always do. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's always, uh, they do lift the boards and we always do repairs sure. afterwards and yeah. 
Well, thank you very much. It was most interesting. Um, we we think you guys do a terrific job out there. Um, we note the new little garden area right outside uh, by our fountain at Town Hall. It looks very nice. It fits in beautifully, and um, and I know that there's going to be a little bit of signage put there Correct. this year. Yeah. So thank you very much for your presentation. And anybody who's listening that would like to get some more information. Um, if you can't remember, phone the town. We'd be happy to give it to you or, um, or go on the website. Thank you very much Thank for doing Thank you very that. much for having me again. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next thing that we have on our agenda is the Asuyas Art Gallery. Uh, a, what they're asking for, I'm going to... Is there's a letter from them. Would you like me to read that letter? Uh, Would that I, make sense? Or I don't know that we need to read it. We can probably just summarize it. And okay. If, if I could if you, if you wish. Go right ahead. So uh, the, uh, what we have in front of us is, uh, is a request from the, uh, from the uh, Suyas Art Gallery uh, asking uh, the town's permission to uh, put up, uh, uh, I guess, uh, a scu sculptures of uh, a, fam a, a quail family. And they're seeking the uh, council's approval to uh, place this sculpture uh, in place. Uh, the reason that this uh, is here at, at Committee of the Whole is just uh, prior to it being taken to council for a decision, I was wondering if, if council needed any additional information uh, that I could seek out from the, uh, the group. Uh, and if there's nothing, uh, uh, then we would, we would put this uh, to the, uh, the regular agenda for, for decision. Um, I believe that the, that there is no, uh, they're not asking for any money on our behalf. No. They're going to do it themselves. My only question was, um, if the art gallery, and I don't know whether this is even in the, in the works at some time, but if they moved to another location at some point, would this be easy enough to move as well? And does the town... Um, uh, Public Works have any concern about the location of this? It's kind of on the corner. I think they did take into consideration the mowing Second machines and then going around it uh, and a little fence. Um, it is, is that an acceptable location and could it be moved if it had to be? Yes, Councillor Campbell, did you? My understanding was that uh, the sculptures, nothing would be fixed. Obviously, there's weight when you're talking about a concrete, a concrete structure, but um, that nothing is fixed in any way, shape, or form. So I don't see how it would be an issue <coughs> having it moved. Okay. I'm just worried about it being close to that tree, and uh, if they're digging down, if there's a fence, I, don't, I, I just wasn't sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the infrastructure okay. impacts and the sight lines and, and uh, factors like that. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Rhodes? Uh, thank you. Um, some things just fit squarely in that no-brainer category for me, and I'm just wondering if there is, and it makes me suspicious immediately, is there something that we need to be cautious about, or? Uh, n no, no. Uh, not, not okay. you know, nothing that, that we're aware of. It's just that sometimes these things are brought to council, and there are questions, and we have to go back, so we were just being... So we'll uh, do a resolution at a future meeting, and, that's, uh, right. sure. and yep. that's all we need to do? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And I, I don't know if there's any, uh, if any preliminary drawings have been uh, done uh, be, beyond this that, uh, yeah. relative to what they would look like. Uh, that, that's one of the questions that I was, you know, you know going to ask them if there's anybody had done a, a drawing so that it could be uh, uh, put in front of council. Sure. I, I mean, I think it's a great idea, too, especially when we have such an active uh, arts council um, in town and um, various other groups, painters and potters, and, and, uh, and if they're looking at, um, at providing something kind of fun and exciting, um, and California quail is obviously a native to here, even though it says California. We'll call them Masuya's quail. Um, uh, I, I think it's it's a it's a lovely thought on their part, and so um, once we figure out if this is all perfectly acceptable, we'd be happy to look at it again. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, that's all that we have on our business meeting today, and I would need a um, uh, mover and a seconder, please. Thank you. Campbell King to uh, close the meeting.
meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much, Mr. Lacey. Yep. Okay.